Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Discord bot using Java. My very first series that got my channel subscribers was actually my JDA series, my Java Discord API series on YouTube. And ever since then, I haven't really been making any Java Discord API videos because I just got kind of caught up with other things like the Spigot series, which is way more popular. And uh, I wasn't really interested in doing it anymore. But recently I found that uh, a lot of people want to see those videos and also they're kind of interesting. So I thought I'd make some more videos on how to do stuff with the Java Discord API. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to make a simple Discord bot using Maven, the Discord API, and a simple Java project. Now I'm sure there's different uh, Java Discord APIs out there, but the one called JDA Java Discord API is the most popular one that I'm aware of and it works pretty well for what it, uh, yeah, it works pretty well. And uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do first is actually make the project and then I'll show you how to create the bot, hook it up to your, your project and all that fun stuff and then we'll run it and do a basic test. And then in future episodes, you can see how to do stuff with it, like listen for events, uh, commands, uh, a bunch of cool stuff, okay? So let's get started here. First thing I want to do is do file, new, project. Then you can either make a new Java project and then you can import uh, the dependency manually as the jar file, or you can add Maven to the project later on if you want to, or you can just go down here and select Maven or Gradle dependency managers so that we can directly add JDA to it pretty easily rather than having to add it to an existing Java project. So that's what we'll do, select like the Maven project template. Um, you can do Gradle, like I said, if you want to. Uh, JDA does support Gradle as well. Um, some people have a preference over um, Maven to use Gradle, so that's up to you. I like to use Maven though. I've never really used Gradle that much before, so uh, it's up to you. Just choose whatever one you prefer. All right, so click Maven, and then after that, um, you don't really need to select any of this stuff down here. You don't need to create from an archetype. Um, you do need to select the SDK. It supports pretty much uh, all the major SDKs, like uh, version 1.8, or just Java 8, or Java 17, or Java, anything in between that is pretty good, I believe. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do the latest version of Java, which is Java 17 at the time of this recording. You can choose whatever you need as well, or want. So click Next. So here you specify the name of the project and where you want it to live. So I'm going to choose a location first of all. So I'm going to go to my thingy here, my D drive, development, then I'll go to tutorials. And then inside of tutorials, I'll make a new folder called uh, to Discord. How about Java? Java Discord bot. Something like that. Click OK. So now we're going to have a new project inside of the folder Java Discord bot, and that's also going to be the project name and you can leave all of this stuff here. Um, I mean, you may want to set it. I guess we'll set it. So me.cody Simpson, just basically the base package of the project, the artifact ID, basically the name of the jar file or your artifact that uh, the project will be associated with and uh, stuff like that. You don't really need this though, like I said, but you can select it if, and set it if you want to. After that, click finish, and now it's going to create the project using the Maven template. So this window here. And boom, so now we have a default palm.xml file. And if you've used Maven before, you know that this is the file that you can add your dependencies to and, others, and other information to configure the project. Okay, so open this up, see what we got. Looks like we just have an empty main and then Java and resources folder. This is the, these are the common folders you have for a Maven project, resources for resources. We don't really need this for this project specifically, but you may need it in the future. But all of our source code is gonna go into this Java folder here, okay? So I'm just going to create uh, the main class of this project now. Um, you can create it into a package called me.cody Simpson or whatever your base package is called if you want to. Um, so I'm gonna just do that. So new package, me.cody Simpson. So that essentially creates a folder structure. Um, and then we're gonna create a main class, so Java class. We're gonna call it, uh, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna just call my Discord bot. This is where we're gonna initialize the Discord bot and run it. So we're gonna, need a, we're gonna need a main method, so main. And then now after we do that, we need to actually import the Java Discord API dependency into this project so that we can start using it. So go to the palm.xml, and here you wanna specify dependencies, dependencies, open that up. And now we can paste a new dependency there. So this dependency information can be found on the JDA website. So we're gonna to go to the interwebs now and just search Java 
Discord API. It should be the first result. There we go, GitHub. So here's all the information. Go ahead and read through it if you want to. Uh, you should read through it if you're looking to make more Discord bots in the future. But for this tutorial, you can find most of the information that we need on the wiki page. So where's the wiki? Wiki, wiki, wiki. I gotta, I gotta admit, in my opinion, the documentation is not that good. It's not very, uh, I mean, it's, it tells you what you need to know, but it could be better, structured better. But anyway, so here's the, actually the, uh, here's the dependency information. So we can just go in and copy this and it says replace version with the latest version here. So, uh, 5.0.0 alpha dot eight. Okay. We'll try that. So put it there and do 5.0.0 alpha eight. There we go. You may or may not get the auto suggestion there, by the way, but if you don't get it, just type it out yourself. And then after this, once you add the dependency, go ahead and click the Maven reload button up here. Now it's going to try importing it from Maven Central and putting it into your project so that you can use it, okay? All right, so cool. Now we can go back here and you should be able to use it here. So you can do JDA, see if we can import that. There we go. So now we have the import available, net dot dev 8 shun .jda .api blah 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 so we can import this we'll call this uh, bot is equal to and uh, let's pull up the wiki now so we can see what we need to do I mean I already know what to do that's what the point of this tutorial is <laughs> but uh, I want to show you where you can find all the other information if you're working if you want to learn how to do everything else uh, okay so you can just go down here to documentation then click wiki section and here you can find a lot of the wiki uh, examples and stuff like that I'll teach you how to do some basic stuff okay so check that out. I'll leave a link for this in the description below to this page here. And uh, yeah, okay. Anyways, so that'll be your reference. Now let's go ahead and start doing some coding. So to create a Discord bot, you're gonna need to do JDA builder dot, and then you have these create methods here. So you have create, but we have create default and create light as well. So essentially, originally, you didn't need to specify these things. They're called gateway intents or just intents. Um, An intent is basically telling the Java Discord API um, essentially what you intend to do with the bot, what kind of um, events you're gonna listen to. And so if you want to listen to a specific event, like for example, messages, you need to specify, for example, the, the message intent or whatever that would be. So to make your life easier, the Java Discord API team made a method called create default so that you don't have to worry about, you know, specifying your intents and working on configuring that and all that stuff. You can just use the create default method, pass in your bot token, and then, you know, start using your bot with some basic default intents already specified. If you want to do some more advanced stuff, then obviously you might need to change that. You may need to manually specify the intents that you're trying to uh, use. But for now, just for a basic project, you can just do create defaults and then put your token inside of here, okay? And then after that, you can also specify some other information with all these methods here, because this is like a builder thingy. So it's following the builder pattern. So you can specify a bunch of like configuration options like the activity. Uh, what's an activity, right? So if you go to my Discord server here, I have some Discord bots, my Cortex bot. It says listening to Juice World. How would you get it to do that? You can do that by setting an activity, which is pretty cool. So activity, then you have different types of activities. So you have activity listening, activity competing, activity playing, streaming, watching. So anytime you see something on someone's profile, like playing or playing or playing or playing, um, that's probably the most common one you see. That's from an activity, okay? We can do that with a bot. So we're gonna do activity dot playing, and we're gonna say um, with your mom. So playing with your mom, the bot's playing with your mom, okay? And then you can specify other information, like I said, but we don't really need to worry about that at the moment. That's probably the most common things you're gonna set. Uh, besides, you know, specifying if you have listeners and slash commands and stuff like that, that's all you need pretty much. So we're going to do build once you're done specifying all the configuration options. Okay. And then make sure you handle the events. I mean the exception. So add exception to method signature, or you can handle it using a try and catch. There you go. And yeah, hopefully now when you run this, it should be able to build the bot and start it. But obviously we don't have an actual token here, so it's not going to work. So what we need to do is go to the Java developer portal or excuse me, the Discord developer portal and add a new application and add a new bot to that application so that it's officially recognized by Discord as a Discord bot and we can get a token for that bot, okay? And we can also add it to our Discord server. So let's get started on that. Let's go to the interwebs again. Let's search uh, Discord uh, application portal. And uh, so there we go, we get Discord developer portal. Uh, just go ahead and open that. And let's go up here to applications at the top left. 
And as you can see here, I have a bunch of applications that have already created for different bots in the past. But what I want to do is create a new Discord bot. So I'm going to click new application and we're going to give it a name. So we'll say, um, we'll call it Cody test. Okay, create. There we go. So now we have a new application here. Um, then go to bot and then click add bot. Yes, do it. There we go. So now we have a, do, a new Discord bot called Cody test. And you can obviously change the username to something else if you want to. And go ahead and copy this token here and go ahead and add it to this here, this method, so that whenever you try running this program now, it'll run it as that Discord bot, okay? So make sure you hide that token from anyone else. Don't steal it from me. Uh, <laughs> steal it from somebody else. But yeah, create your token and make sure you hide it from anyone else uh, because if someone gets that token, they can run a Discord bot as you, right? And that's not good because if someone runs a Discord bot as you, it's also gonna be controlling any Discord bot that's already on a server, okay? So what that means is that if I have this Discord bot here that I just created and I add it to my main Cortex server and somebody gets the token and takes control of that bot and that has admin permissions, they can do anything. They can ban everybody, they can, you know, create havoc and wreck havoc on my server. And that's not very fun, right? So make sure you hide it. Um, there's, there's different ways you can hide stuff like this. You can do environmental variables or you can just not share the source code to anybody. Uh, just look into that if you want to, okay? Uh, but don't directly upload this to GitHub <laughs> um, if it's a public repository with your token publicly available. That's a mistake that we've all made at some point, but don't do that, don't do that yourself, okay? <laughs> now, before I run this, of course, there's no server that I can, there's nothing, nothing's really gonna happen, right? Because this Discord bot has not been added to any servers. So let's figure out how we can add it to my test server here. I have one right here called test one. And I already have a default bot that I added earlier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it. Kick it, boom. And now I'm gonna add the new bot that we just created. So go back, then go up to auth2, go down to URL generator and select uh, whatever you want here. So select bot, then tell it uh, what permissions you want your bot to have. So of course you don't want all bots on your server to have admin permissions, cause then that's just dangerous. If it's not in your control, if the bot's not in your control, then it'd be dangerous to let anyone control everything on your server with admin permissions. So for example, if you know that a bot that you're adding to your server is gonna be performing a set of specific tasks, then you wanna give it permissions that are relevant to that task, not just every single permission, unless you want to. So hopefully that makes sense. Just give it the permissions that make sense. In this case, I don't really care. I want it to be able to do whatever I want. So I'm just gonna select admin or administrator. And now if I add this bot to my server, it'll be able to do anything that uh, an admin bot can do as admin permissions, okay? Now go ahead and copy this link here. And whoever you give this link to, basically a thing will pop up asking them if they want to add your bot to their server. So in this case, you can just give it to yourself. So paste it up here, go to that link. And now it'll ask me, this is me, I look like a dork. Um, it'll ask me what servers I want to add this bot to. So I have three servers currently. I'll add it to this server here and click continue. It wants to verify the permissions that this bot will have. Click authorize. Yes, I'm a human being, I think. Oh no, this, I'm not a human, I don't know how to solve this. Okay, so boat, 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 boat. Boat, 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 boat. What if I failed it? That'd be embarrassing. Okay, cool, so now that bot it should be added. There we go, it says a wild Cody test has appeared, which is my bot, right? That's the name that we gave it. Pretty cool. So if you want to add it to a server that's not your own, then give that link to the owner of the server that you want to add it to, okay? There we go, so we got the token created and added to our bot, and then we got the bot added to our Discord server. So now let's go ahead and try running the program here that we've created it to see if it starts the bot, because currently it's appearing as offline because it's offline, right? As you can see, the run button here is not selectable because there's no run configuration. So to add one, all you gotta do is, well, there's a few ways you can do it. You can either add a, a Maven configuration for Maven specific stuff, and you can specify some Maven goals and whatnot, but um, you don't really need to do that for this type of project. So you can just go here and select the run button on your main method. And what it's gonna do is run the program using the main method, a simple Java program, and it'll add that configuration as your new default configuration for you, okay? So click that, run discordbot.main. Hopefully it'll work, let's find out. <laughs> so it's building it, running it. There we go, so it looks bad, it's got a bunch of red stuff, but this is actually a good sign. Um, it's just how the messages appear. So some basic stuff about logging, not able to set up some logging related stuff, I guess. But that's not really too important at the moment. 
the really important thing is that it says login successful. So when it says login successful, you know that the Discord bot is actually up and running because that's the main thing that needs to be done with the token. It needs to be able to log in. And now it's up, as you can see, it says that the bot is online, which is awesome. And it says playing a game with your mom, which is perfect. All right, that's it for this video. That's all I wanna show you. Hopefully it was a good explanation. When I first started creating Java Discord bots, I found the process to be really annoying and kind of tricky. Um, it was a little overwhelming for creating Discord bots, but hopefully you like this explanation. Hopefully you guys now know how to create Java Discord bots with ease. And uh, stay tuned for future videos if you wanna learn how to do more stuff with Java Discord API and Java Discord bots. Um, I'll be making more videos, like I said, in the future. There's of course many different languages you can make Discord bots with, but Java is my favorite just because Java is an awesome language. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. I don't know where I was going with it, that. Uh, see you later. Bye. All right. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. So you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.